So let's talk through the best options for leaders for the Space Marine Army right now. As the enormous choice of named and special characters alike, which are the heroes that should lead the Astartes into war? Hello and welcome back to Warspace Tactics, where today we're talking Space Marines, and in this video I thought we could talk over the Space Marine roster of commanders and heroes, go through generic data sheets, special characters and attachments, and talk about why some choices might be a little bit more tempting than most. I feel like with the current state of the game, just flat out ranking Space Marine characters isn't really the easiest subject, as lots of it just really depends on what chapter or detachment that you're playing. Just looking at the more generic picks in Codex Space Marines, I'd broadly rate the vast majority of them as at least usable. They have had a couple of rounds of points adjustment since 10th edition launch, so often the ones that were getting played the least have already had points cuts at this point, and things might have evened out a bit. I would say that some do stand out as just objectively being a bit stronger or a bit weaker, though quite a few of them could be a little bit better or worse depending on detachment. Detachments are definitely important with character choice, given that they'll govern which units are going to be a bit better and which ones you're likely to be building around, so that's going to drive which characters are actually going to be good for that. And then on top of that, you've got your choice of chapter. Depending on whether you choose a codex or a divergent chapter, that'll give you a whole load of extra characters to choose from, maybe just one or two, maybe a lot. Plus the squads that they can bring are kind of relevant as well. You might have some of the more generic character picks be interesting if they can lead one of the more unique squads from that chapter. And they also have their own unique attachments as well, again which might make certain characters a bit better than others. I'd say for Space Marines at the moment, at a competitive level, you maybe tend to see a bit of convergence on just a few of the same picks. And some of that's partly just due to certain units being seen a little bit competitively suboptimal. Say for example Terminators are an example of that I think. I wouldn't say that Terminators are a particularly awful unit for more casual play, but you very rarely see them get played in competitive, so all the attached characters to Terminator squads are maybe just seen as a bit more niche for the absolute top tier of 40k play. As mentioned though, I feel like casually you can get some good mileage out of most things, and I feel like there's a lot of scope for creativity and unusual combos in a less hyper-optimised environment. In any case, with all that out of the way, I thought that I'd talked through just a few of the more generic picks for Codex Space Marines, maybe a few choices that I'd consider particularly stand out or a bit weaker than most, then go through a bunch of chapter specific ones, for this video more focusing on the Codex chapters than Divergent chapters, though I will mention them, and then go through the core Space Marine detachments as well, and just a few more suggestions for characters and leaders that can do particularly well in those formations. First up, starting with generic Codex Space Marine datasheets though, and just for ones that have a bit more or less raw datasheet strength, I'd consider these ones as perhaps some of the weaker ones out of the more generic picks. I've just very rarely seen these in any sort of competitive list since 10th edition came out, or for their own reasons. The Apothecary kind of gambles on your units being damaged but not destroyed to have any value, which isn't necessarily going to be the case in 10th edition 40k, often things get focused down. It's maybe best in things like Hell Blasters, where you might do some chip casualties to your own unit, perhaps. The standard Ancient, I don't think it's particularly overwhelming, unless you happen to have some sort of Relic Banner. The Lieutenant in Reaver Armour, I think, is directly outclassed by the Lieutenant in Phobos Armour. I guess maybe you could use him to get some better mileage out of Hounds of Morkai's ability. The standard Librarian, I think, is alright. He gives you the 4 plus Invulnerable save and a little bit of Psychic Blasting damage. I feel like he just seems like more of a side grade on a unit more than anything else, and often having the psychic keyword isn't always a positive in 40k when anti psyker exists. And the chapter on the bike I think is rather hamstrung by Outriders. Definitely nowhere near as bad as it used to be, now they've gone down in cost quite significantly, but I feel like in general they're more of a unit that you might just want to use as cheap interference squads, as opposed to trying to build them big and make them into your core damage dealing in some way or another, unless you're going for some sort of fluffy white scar storm lance or something. Moving on, I'd perhaps rate this section as having a bit more value or interest, though maybe still a bit middling unless you've got a specific reason to want to use them. The Blade Garden Terminator Ancients I think give some okay value to their units, extra objective control and damage buffs of one sort or another. The Phobos Captain gives you some redeploys which is quite big with perfect knowledge of the opponent, you are only doing it on Phobos units though. And it's kind of necessary to be building big into Phobos to make him worth it. And the Lieutenant can do you some fun move shoot move shenanigans. Maybe it could be an interesting way of getting Reavers to close combat if you want to try and make them work. The Judas here gives you fights first, 
not bad, but also paying a big premium for it. Maybe if Blade Guard were a super central unit that everyone else uses, he's not too awful, though he's competing against solid damage boosts like the Lieutenant and the Chaplain. Speaking of which, the various Chaplain options give you plus one to wound for your unit. Not really a bad melee buff, and I feel like the Terminator Chaplain is kind of interesting for Terminator squads. Getting plus one to wound on all those mid-strength power fists is rather nice. Finally, and sticking with the Terminators, the Terminator Captain and Librarian, I both think are kind of fine in the value they bring for their points cost. It just means that you are needing to build around Terminators, which as mentioned, rarely seems to be the way that competitive lists tend to go at their price tag right now. I feel like there's probably a room for a points drop on the standard Terminator data sheets for Games Workshop, seeing as they don't really seem to get played in competitive. It's not like standard Space Marine armies are setting the world on fire right now. For more generic data sheets, that just leaves the ones that I'd consider kind of stand out, and maybe a bit of a cut above the rest just for raw power. Maybe not too bad for bearing certain enhancements and things, though likely still facing very stiff competition from named characters from your choice of chapter. Here I've chosen to rank the Lieutenant and Apothecary Biologist, the Tech Marine, the Captain and Gravis Captain, detachment dependent for those given that they do battle tactics, the Phobos Librarian and the Combi Weapon Lieutenant for some lone operative style goodness. First up, for those two Captain variants, they just give you the free battle tactic stratagems, which is pretty handy. Particularly nice in things like the Firestorm Detachment or Sons of Sanguinius, or if maybe you're going all in on some sort of big combo like the Fire Discipline combo. I feel like they're interesting enough in enough detachments to be well worth considering. They can always use their CP on Armor of Contempt or Command Point rerolls where it makes sense to. And beyond that, they just have a good melee profile, get an invulnerable save, and can join a fair few chapter unique unit variants as well. Maybe heading up a Proteus kill team for Death Watch or Thunderwolf Cavalry with the Thunderwolf mounted one for the Space Wolves. The Gravis one feels particularly standout for leading aggressors into the battle, who can often be a good unit for big damage combos. And the standard on foot one can lead some threatening units, things like Blade Guard if you like, or maybe Assault Intercessors for the Blood Angels, which it seems to have the fashion for him to pair with them in Sons of Sanguinius. The Lieutenant and Apothecary Biologist feels like it's one of the easiest leader choices to include. A pretty nice direct damage increase to the units that they pair with, with things like Hell Blasters, Blade Guard, or chapter specific stuff, or Aggressors or Eradicators if you're taking the Biologist. Lethal Hits just gives you a simple and effective boost against tough stuff, and melee is fairly good in close combat. The Standard Lieutenant gives you fallback shoot and charge, and the Biologist comes with a bit of extra OC for the Gravis units. They both can be kind of interesting as they can join units at the same time as a captain or chapter master, which means that you could have them alongside epic heroes in the same squad and have some interesting power combos with an enhancement and an epic hero. Say for example the Marnius Kalgar and Apothecary Biologist with Infiltrate in Vanguard Spearhead. Sticking with the Lieutenant and the Combi Weapon 1 crops up from time to time in competitive lists, he puts reroll ones to wound on one marked objective, and then from there is just an annoying lone operative that's hard to kill due to the feel no pain, stealth and reactive move. It's not really going to do too much damage besides against the lightest infantry, but can just be something that's really frustrating for the enemy to catch up with. Threaten to do secondaries, screen out parts of the army from enemy deep strikers and things, or potentially do nuisance charges when the bulk of his role is done, and you just need to hold up the enemy in the late game and stop them doing what they want to. For some detachments, he can bear some interesting enhancements as well, things that you want protected, but you don't necessarily want in a big squad to buff it. The Librarian and Phobos armor is a somewhat common pick for infiltrators. For the extra points investment, it gives you a unit that can't be shot greater than 12 inches away, and you also can't deep strike within 12 inches of it. And between that, you've just got a ridiculously safe home objective. The enemy just can't interact with it at all unless they can move very fast and get up close. He also gives his unit a bit more power to punch back harder than you'd expect, with Smite plus the Force Weapon, which does actually increase the damage output of Infiltrators from being kind of bad to at least threatening to medium infantry like enemy Space Marines. Certainly not everyone chooses to run them with Infiltrators, but I feel like they're not the worst pick in the world. Finally, I think just for all-around good value, if you've got vehicles, then the Tech Marine for 55 points does well. For that points cost, I think he brings a lot to the board, plus one to hit and repairing a vehicle for D3 wounds, a sort of pseudo lone operative ability that can still be interesting for perhaps stringing out to objectives where needed, contributing a heavy bolter worth of firepower, and actually some surprisingly savage melee for a vehicle support character. 
particularly if he made the mistake of breaking one of his vehicles nearby and his attacks going all the way up to 7. So you've actually got a surprisingly potent counter charge unit that could threaten entire squads worth of enemy medium infantry. He's an absolute staple in Ironstorm Spearhead where you usually want multiple of them bearing those good enhancements. We'll go through a few of those detachments at the end of the video but I thought it might be worth stopping off to talk about all the epic heroes. I thought I'd quickly run through some of the more standard Codex chapter leaders and then talk a bit more briefly about the Divergent chapters. In general I feel like seeing as the Codex chapters don't really have all that much to sell them, for the most part Games Workshop has made their datasheets at least kind of interesting. The more standout ones I'd rate as Marnius Kalgar, Chief Librarian Targaryus, Uriel Ventris, Adrax Agatone, Vulcan Hestan and Kayvan Shrike. Otherwise for the ones I'd consider maybe a little bit more mid, Gilliman I think is okay for the points cost but maybe not better than that. Cato Sicarius just adds a few slightly scatter gun buffs even if they are individually interesting ones. I think Lysander's genuinely quite strong with Terminators, though the fact that they're not run quite as commonly holds him back a bit. Tor Garadon's alright, but a bit painful if he's not against his vehicle prey that he likes to kill, and he certainly misses that lethal hits buff that he used to have. Corsaro Khan's a fairly strong melee character, nothing wrong with him at all, and he's fairly savage against the right targets, perhaps worth including, but I'm not sure he's standout enough to really warrant too much attention. And Iron Father Phyros just tends to be seen as a little bit on the niche side, given that you need to kind of do two things at once with him, maybe giving a feel no pain to heavy intercessors or similar, while also managing to buff vehicles at the same time. Focusing on the ones I consider a bit stronger though, Chief Librarian Tigurus I think is rather good, just bringing a whole load of value for the 75 points, and particularly since things like Stern Guard and Intercessors went down, I feel like he is perhaps a bit of an underrated pig. Fairly big damage from the Storm of the Emperor's Wrath, free overwatch or other reactive stratagems, minus one to hit for the units, plus some psychic defense as well, plus he contributes some alright melee on top of all of that stuff. He's still not seen it quite as commonly in competitive play though, perhaps due to competition from Kalgar and Ventris. Speaking of which, Marnius Kalgar remains great, 185 points for him with his two blade guard, good melee, farms command points, advance and charge and advance and shoot, loads to like in a unit of blade guard or a unit of aggressors, he just adds a massive amount of threat to the unit and those command points can be really great in the right army. As mentioned he's often been seen skulking around with aggressors in vanguard spearhead, potentially being infiltrated up the board, though I feel like he's pretty strong charging out of a land raider or just foot slogging with a unit of blade guard perhaps, with that twin links damage 3 melee he does hit them like a ton of bricks. Uriel Ventris is a nice cheap captain equivalent and he comes for 75 points, he doesn't get you the free stratagems and it's kind of weird that you're buying basically him as a somewhat fighty marine captain and then throwing his deep strike ability on something completely different usually. He can be used to get some pretty godly alpha strike eradicators or devastator centurions in vanguard spearhead able to deep strike in turn 2 and get the first strike on the enemy, potentially redeploying round the board with vanguard. Then for Uriel we can put him with some company heroes or with some assault intercessors as a nice cheap bodyguard unit and just have something that's fairly threatening to push up the midboard. For the Raven Guard we have Shadow Master Kayvan Shrike himself. He's 100 points to give a unit of jump intercessors or vanguard veterans basically lone operative so you can't shoot them first and they're likely to get the jump on you not the other way around. And when they get there he can certainly help out in melee with a whole bunch of twin link strength 5 damage 2 attacks. You can also return him to strategic reserve as well if it makes sense, but I feel like that's maybe a little bit borderline given that he's already got very good movement. Ajax Agaton of the Salamanders is just a pretty brutal melee character, 5 attacks at strength 10 and damage 3 with Malleus Noctum is very nice, and he allows his units to re-roll the wound roll, which means that he's fairly godly leading blade guard. They absolutely love that with their kind of low strength, strength 5 power swords. He also comes with halving enemy OC, a fairly good flamer and a 2 plus save, there's a lot to like for that points cost here. Finally for this section and also for the Salamanders, Vulcan Hestan I think is a great deal at 100 points. He can mark a unit for full rerolls with Melter and Flamer, really nice with Land Raider Redeemers in particular with their very scary Flamestorm cannons, pretty strong with Infernus Marines or even helpful for Eradicators if you have them around. They might get their full re-rolls against vehicles, but if you're fighting a well-armoured foe like Custodes and things, getting those extra melter hits and wounds is going to be huge. Otherwise he's got a good combat profile that could run well with company heroes or some assault intercessors, 
and his seeker of lost relics gives him some near total control of a midfield objective. Beyond the more codex compliant chapters, I thought I'd run through the divergent chapters as well. I'll mention them here briefly for completeness, though I'm not going through the individual data sheets on every single one of these, as plenty of these are basically mini armies in their own right. For the Blood Angels, they do have plenty of HQs that do get run competitively. Lamartes and the Sanguinor out of the Epic Heroes, maybe. Lamartes with his big minus one damage and getting lethal hits for Death Company is great. The Sanguinor gets to heroic intervention into enemy units and fight first. The standard chaplain is quite nice with on foot Death Company, which I've seen people running from time to time. Sanguinary priests are nice with their feel no pain and extra AP. And it's now become very fashionable to run captains and jump captains with power fists, both of those doing extra well in Sons of Sanguinius. That detachment now getting them all the way up to strength 10 on those power fists, and they're really quite nice to lead things like the Assault Intercessors and the Jump Pack Intercessors. That's just the overall combo between the captains and those models is really quite scary, plus even more so if they trigger that Lance and Lethal Hits stratagem. For Dark Angels, it's really a one-man story in Azrael, he grants an invulnerable save and sustained hits, so just great damage and defence there, plus farms a command point each turn. Even if he didn't have any good melee profile, that would still be enough to make him great, though he does have a chapter master melee profile on top of all of that. Otherwise, for things that are maybe a slightly bit more relevant, the Terminator Ancient can be quite nice with the Pennant of Remembrance, the Ravenwing Command Squad's quite nice in Company of Hunters, and the Terminator characters have more relevance in the Deathwing Detachment. For the Space Wolves, just about everything on a Thunder Wolf will have some great value. Harold Death Wolf, the Battle Leader, and the Wolf Lords are all staples in the competitive Stormlance lists. Maybe Canis Wolfborn just a little bit less so much. Otherwise, in their big cast of characters, Logan Grimnar for his big re-rolls, Beyond the Fell-Handed is nice for his tanky scary dreadnoughts that can also threaten to do sagas. And after the rest, I do quite like Ulrich with Blood Claws as a nice cheap and destructive unit, and Ragnar's fairly scary with Bladeguard veterans, absolutely tons of damage to attacks there. For the Death Watch, for unique stuff, maybe the Watchmaster for his Ruinous Stratagem type ability. I'm still not sure I'd really consider him standout good though. Maybe it could be relevant to have a captional Watchmaster around if you're taking the Tome of Ectoclades, the enhancement where they get some really big re-rolls against the enemy targets of their choice, and otherwise maybe a Lieutenant to buff the Proteus kill team, the Beacon Angelus also being a really nice enhancement to get some ra free rapid ingress deep strike, which could be quite a nice thing to have in the toolbox. Finally, for the Black Templars, for their special characters, Hellbrecht in particular is just standout, massive amounts of melee damage, and he works great with Sword Brethren as he can get the damage buff that their units can take, while also boosting them with his own special rule, never mind if they access any Templar vows via Righteous Crusaders. If you did want to go for an all-in combo with that, you could pair them with a Primaris Lieutenant or Castellan. With Righteous Crusaders buffs, that basically gives you a unit that can threaten to kill anything up to a Titan. Otherwise, Grimaldus or a Ten Houses Bones character can be nice for a 5 plus feel no pain in a really big Crusader squad. And the Emperor's Champion, I think, still brings a fair amount of fight for his points cost, putting that Black Sword to work in style. Finally, let's talk through the core detachments from Codex Space Marines. I might pay a bit more attention to the ones that see more common competitive play. The Gladius Task Force generally works well with most of what you might get in a normal chapter. A few of the melee chapters do like it quite a bit. Blood Angels, Space Wolves and Black Templars all seem to get some good results with their unique characters. Beyond that though, easily the most standout thing is a character to bear the Fire Discipline Enhancement, take an Apothecary by a Logis or a Lieutenant, give them that enhancement, and in Devastator Doctrine, you have a character that will give you sustained and lethal hits on a 5+, plus, which when combined with Oath of Moment, make things like Aggressors or Hellblasters into basically anti-everything units that all just gun something off the board, no questions asked. For things more relevant for the Firestorm Assault Force, I feel like Captain Variants do particularly well here. They've got nice battle tactics in the plus 1 to wound stratagem, and the Torrent Devastating wound stratagem if you wanted to go with Flamestorm Aggressors. Getting either or both of those for free, or just getting multiple copies of it on the table at the same time is kind of fun. It can also be a pretty good choice to use that flipper dice to a 6 type enhancement as well. That one just provides massive extra value to any big damage dealer type unit, basically automatically guaranteeing that you save some damage when it gets used, never mind anything that you manage to do with it on the offensive. 
Otherwise, Vulcan Hestan plus Torrent Devastating Wounds is a really nice combo. He allows you to re-roll wound rolls against a target and fish for more Devastating Wounds with Infernus Marines or Land Raider Redeemer if you'd like to. Ajax with Blade Guard and a Land Raider are definitely units that enjoy the plus one to wound stratagem as well if you're going Salamanders. For the Vanguard Spearhead, you likely want something with the Infiltrate Enhancement. Could be a bit chapter dependent, but likely some sort of scary damage dealer with at least some durability. Maybe a Lieutenant or a Chaplain leading some Blade Guard, or a big Terminator or Aggressor Squad, maybe headed up by one of the Terminator characters or an Apothecary Biologist for Aggressors. Perhaps one of the more obvious tournament staples is the Calgar with Apothecary Biologist combo for a pretty devastating Infiltrate type unit. The Apothecary takes the enhancement and then you've just got an enormous threat in the midfield with Calgar and his attendant little honor guards. If sticking with the Ultramarines, as mentioned, Uriel Ventris absolutely loves this attachment. The common tournament thing to do with him is to put his deep strike on a Devastator Centurion unit and allow them to threaten to be able to repeatedly deep strike around the board. Really quite scary stuff when they can return to reserves for 1 CP, so they're pretty much guaranteed to draw a bead on what they want to. Given it's Vanguard and they have a few synergies with Phobos type things as well, Phobos characters could definitely have a bit more relevance here. If you are taking excessive Phobos and Vanguard type units, maybe the Captain might be worth it. And there could be a bit more interest for a Phobos Librarian with Infiltrators if you've got more stratagem options to be able to play tricks with them. Finally, for the perhaps more commonly run competitive armies, there's the Ironstorm Spearhead. Obviously Tech Marines are the kings here, a lot of the good enhancements for buffing vehicles are just outright locked to them, and you kind of want them anyway really to support the massive amount of vehicles that it gives you incentive to run. Otherwise I have seen people using both the Combi Weapon Lieutenant and the Phobos Librarian with Infiltrators to use Master of Machine War. That's the one that allows vehicles to advance and shoot or fall back and shoot, so quite nice to have that on a lone operative to keep it safe. And maybe as a bit of a counterpoint, I think it is quite fun that you could just give one character that really big 4 plus feel no pain. You could have an absolutely spectacularly tanky Gravis Captain, maybe not necessarily the most competitive or optimised thing in the world, but still kind of fun. Otherwise, we've got the Stormlance Task Force, which is more commonly seen on the competitive scene, on the competitive scene for the Space Wolves, but unfortunately not much else. As mentioned, the Space Wolf characters are pretty stand out there. Between a battle leader and a wolf lord, you can get free stratagems, lethal hits, reactive moves, and plus one to advance and charge, which combos great with the detachment rule. Plus those attached characters can get the benefits of the plus one damage when the thunder wolves charge in. All of that's just excellent when combined with all the fun stuff that you can do with the stratagems of that detachment and the advance and charge. Otherwise, I guess bike chaplains are going to be standout. Otherwise, maybe the Ravenwing command squad if you're playing Dark Angels. I'd say that the other melee things like chaplains or jump captains for flat out melee damage are going to be a bit more interesting here. Advance and charge will give them a better chance of actually getting the charge rather than the other way around. Otherwise for the anvil siege force, perhaps a sustained and lethal hits combo with a lieutenant, perhaps with hell blasters or maybe an apothecary biologist that's joining perhaps even a heavy intercessor squad. The main downside being is that you need to survive a turn in the open without moving to get that maximally. Otherwise, captains look like they're interesting enough for activating a few of the damage dealer stratagems, maybe adding a 6 plus feel no pain enhancements to a big chunky unit like Terminators or Aggressors, maybe. Finally, for the first company, basically anything that leads the veteran units will do well enough. The Terminator characters definitely feel like they've got way more value there with the repeated redeploys, but anything that can give Blade Guard a bit more punch doesn't hurt either, maybe lethal hits or plus one to wound with a lieutenant or chaplain. Overall, really quite a lot of ground to cover when there's talking about best space marine leaders for just about any one army. For the most part, my general principles would be that often the epic heroes tend to be some of the most standout choices for any one army. I would say perhaps some a little bit more than others, and often the divergent chapters tend to have at least something maybe a little bit more standout than some of the core ones. Though I feel like salamanders and ultramarines in particular stand out for having some good ones of their own. Otherwise, just for generic character strength, I feel like captains, lieutenants, tech marines, and perhaps some lone operative type support from Phobos librarians or combi weapon lieutenants are all alright. And then all that taken into context of the detachment, there's certain characters that you're probably just going to want to have in each detachment, and some of them maybe that it might not matter exactly which character you choose, but you want something to bear a really good enhancement, and maybe that's the most important thing rather than the character. 
In any case, look forward to hearing your thoughts. Let me know what you're using and having good success with in your armies right now or any other choices and combos that have missed for some of the detachments. I'm sure there's a fair few other things that could be a bit more standout with certain enhancements that I've glossed over here. If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics, or certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming. I do tend to post new things just about every day. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that All Specs Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that linked in the video description if you'd like to help support and keep these videos coming. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description below. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.